Good morning! Welcome to Alan the Friesen, Alan at the .com. This is my English 20-1 class. Normally my students clap, but I don't think they're in the mood for that today, so that's alright. This is more of a sarcastic, muttering comment sort of class, but I love them all the same. So today we're going to be looking at the poem My Papa's Waltz by Theodore Retke. Retke, not Rothke. Retke. We're going to be going through this poem, not so much line by line, but looking more at the bigger ideas. And the one thing that I want you to get from this lecture is this idea. In this poem, structure informs content. Structure informs content. Content, not content. Content. What does this mean? It means that the way that Retke has written this poem, the structure of it, actually tells us a little bit about the meaning. But let's get to that in a little bit. First of all, we have a poem about a father who is playing with a young child. Now, we don't know for certain that it's a boy, but we've got a pretty, we're, we're guessing that. Because on the uh, second line here, we've got the idea of um, the whiskey making a small boy dizzy. So we're going to assume, for the purposes of this lecture and the purposes of interpreting this poem, that we are talking about a, a son here. So I'm not saying he, she, him, her, all that throughout the whole lecture. It's about a father who's playing with his son. And we know that they're playing because of the word romped on line five. If you unpack the poem a little bit more, though, you notice that there's a ton of words that have very negative connotation. For those of you who are in my class, what I what I have done, in fact, I will do. What I will do is put up a copy of what I've got here, which includes my annotations. And what I did was I underlined all the words with a negative connotation, and then I put a square around all the words with a positive connotation, just to compare those. So that's what we're going to be talking about right now. There's a lot of words that have a negative connotation. So, for instance, whiskey, the whiskey on your breath. The boy is talking about the, the fact that the father smells like whiskey. That doesn't, that doesn't really have a positive connotation when it comes to literature. A boy playing with his father who's been drinking. Drinking in our culture, especially for fathers, especially in literature, is seen as something that's negative. On the third line, we've got the idea of hanging on like death. The simile here, like death, you're hanging on like death. Again, the negative connotation, even though we can take it to mean that he's hanging on very tightly. Remember, nothing is accidental. Retke used the word death on purpose. The second stanza, we have the pans sliding from the kitchen shelf. So the dancing, uh, the playing is so intense that the room is becoming disordered. The mother's countenance at the very end of the second stanza could not unfrown itself, so she's angry, she, she's upset, anyway. she's frowning, which is also very negative. Third stanza, second word in the second line, battered. The hand that held my wrist was battered on one knuckle. Battering, which is also a term that we use to think about abuse, which at this point we might be thinking, is this, is this poem about abuse, about child abuse? The right ear at the end of the third stanza, scraping a buckle, Fourth stanza, we have beating time on my head with the palm caked hard by dirt. Beat time on my head. And again, that word beat, this is not a poem in translation. This is in English. In English, beat has a negative connotation. When we associate father, son, and beat, we again come up with this idea of child abuse. So we look at these words with the negative connotations. And even though on the surface it appears to be very, very playful, we can't help but think that there, there, are, there is this idea of child abuse that comes up in this poem. Now, that's a very, it's not, I want to say it's a, a contentious interpretation, but there are definitely two camps when it comes to this poem. There are those who say, yes, we've got the father who's playing. We're going to look at the positive connotation in a second. A father who's playing, but because of all these words, because of the close meaning of words like whiskey 
of death, battered, scraped, beat. Because of these words, the poem has an overly negative sense to it. If we look at the words that have a positive connotation, we have waltz, which is obviously a type of dance between two different people. Uh, waltz is more fun. You do that with somebody who you like, or you do it as part of a social gathering. It's, it's playful. There's no negative connotation when it comes to waltz. And waltzing again at the end of the first stanza. Romping as well. Romping has a very positive connotation, either of playing or of people romping about the town. So it's playful, maybe out of control playful, but still there's nothing negative there. And then the last one that I found is in the fourth stanza, third line, then waltz me off to bed. So notice how I've talked about waltz, waltzing, waltzed, and romped. So really four words, which are really two, waltz and romped, as being the only positive connotations in this poem. So when you balance the negative words with the positive words, you're left with an overly negative image. Which is one of the reasons why this poem is studied so much, first of all, because it's very complex. Surface meaning of the poem. You've got a small boy who's hanging on to his father, who's waltzing, who's dancing. They're romping around, they're knocking stuff off of the walls. He's getting his hand hurt and his, um, his ear hurt by the buckle. And then finally, his father waltzes him off to bed. It, it sounds innocent. And some of these words that have negative connotations can be explained away. For instance, I was just talking about the right ear scrape to buckle. Okay, so we've got his, his, his ear is getting injured, but it's also an indicator of height. If we've got an average sized person and we've got a child dancing here, that means that the, ball, the boy is very short, right? A little guy. So what, like, like four or five? So the battering, the buckle, maybe that doesn't mean that there's this idea of child abuse. Maybe it's just an indicator of height. Likewise with hanging on like death. If you hang on to something like death, you're never going to let it go. This is hyperbole. This is an exaggeration. And instead of thinking about, okay, well, child abuse, this child is in a dangerous situation, which it doesn't seem like he is, maybe the death that's implied in this poem has to do with the father-son relationship. Maybe we could interpret that this poem is about, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a memory of his father. He, he remembers this fun time that he had with his father, perhaps after the father had died. Maybe that's what this word death is all about. There's a couple of other words here that also suggest the idea of dependency. Now, this is not unusual when you talk about a father and a son. A son is dependent on his parents, right? The words in the third line of the first stanza, I hung on. I hung on like death. You hang on to your parents. Even as teenagers, to a certain extent, you hang on to them or perhaps hang on to their credit cards, or perhaps their car keys, or perhaps just their food. But you still hang on, you're still part of them. Whereas when you become an adult, you let go of your parents. The idea of letting go, the words letting go come to mind. On the third line, we've got the hand that held my wrist. As a father, I did this quite often with small children, who especially didn't want to hold my hand as I was walking down the street. I held their wrist so that they would be safe. And then finally, at the very end, last line, about the child being waltzed to bed, still clinging to your shirt. The idea of clinging, like the child doesn't want to let go of his father, of his papa, as it's mentioned in the title. So we have, as I said, these negative words, these positive words, and then these words that are associated with, um, with dependency. If we just look at these words, you could make the interpretation that this is a very negative poem, that hidden beneath the surface of the playfulness, there is this idea of danger or abuse possibly going on. Or you could attempt, if you were to write an essay on this, to explain away these negative words. But regardless, if you are writing an essay about this poem, or if you're discussing this poem, the negative words have to be addressed, because there are so many of them. Now before, I talked about this idea of structure informs content. I didn't want to talk about the structure before we had fully ex uh, explored the content. So now that we've done that, we can move on to the structure. The structure of this poem is an iambic trimeter. 
So iambic. Iambic being a series of iams, which is no stress, stress, and tri, meaning three. So iambic trimeter means in each line you should have unstressed stress, unstressed stress, unstressed stress. Three iams, three boots per line. It's not a terribly common um, meter. We see iambic pentameter up more commonly in, um, in sonnets, and we see it in Shakespearean plays. The trimeter pattern really only shows up most often in ballads, which are, um, which are a story or a song that tell a story. And there's, there's another little interesting fact here. A waltz, if you actually look into what a waltz is, it's a type of dance that's written in triple time, which means that there's three beats to the bar. Triple time. Waltz, three beats to the bar. My papa's waltz has three boots per line. <coughs> Interesting. It's almost as if Recky, Recky is saying that you know, we've got this waltz, which is a musical term, and we've got this structure of a poem. This is a poetic waltz. In other words, very interesting. It is a loose ballad. In the uh, second and fourth lines of the first and third stanza, so the words dizzy, not easy, knuckle, and buckle, we have two syllable rhymes. These are also called feminine rhymes. We'll go with two syllable rhymes. They extend the length of the line from six to seven syllables. So we've got this poem that's written in three boots. Um, it mirrors the idea of a waltz. But in the first and third stanza, we also have this uncertainty. It's not a perfect poem written in perfect iambic trimeter. We've got these lines that mess with the pattern a little bit. And then look at the line on the third stanza, third line, at every step he missed, my right ear scraped a buckle. It's very interesting that we've got a poem that has a, a, a identifiable meter, except for a few lines where there's an extra step. And then in the poem itself, you've got a father who's dancing, who's drunk, and who's also missing a step. The structure of the poem informs the content. Imagine how this poem might be interpreted differently if it was written in the structure of a perfect sonnet. Ten lines, or sorry, ten syllables per line, fourteen lines. If it was a perfect sonnet, if it was written, if there was no exceptions to the structure, but then you've got this poem about this uneven, wild sort of dancing, it would seem to be incongruous, incongruous. incongruous. So instead, Recky has deliberately created this pseudo ballad, this loose ballad that has an uneven line structure at specific points. Three boots mirroring a waltz. This is all very deliberate. So then, what's the story? Is it a poem about child abuse? Is it the poem about the rough love of a father? And as for me and my interpretation, I tend to think it's the latter. As a father, I tend to be rough with my children. I just do. I, I pat them heavily on the head. I slap them across the back. But it's not that I'm angry at them or I, you know, I, I don't like them. I'm just, I just play with them. When they were babies, I threw them up in the air and I caught them. And I always caught them. I'm just saying, I always did. But my wife would be like, no, don't do that. That makes me uncomfortable. And even today, I wrestle with them. Sometimes they get hurt. And my wife's like, don't do that. They're going to get hurt. Fathers tend to play a bit more roughly with their children, especially with their sons. So perhaps it's my own experience as a father that's informing my interpretation. So then, as I said, if you were to get anything from this poem, it's the idea that in this one, structure informs content. And that sometimes in a poem, it's okay just to look at the content of it. But often, if you go below the surface, and you count out the syllables, and then you look up, okay, so just like I did, I, wasn't, I, I was not familiar with iambic trimeter, the trimeter bit, which I had not learned since university. So I went online and like, okay, I put in pentameter, uh, tetrameter, and then I said 
three boots, and I came up with Trimeter. If you, if you do that yourself with Google, you'll be able to figure out what these means. And then I looked up poem with uh, my Amic Trimeter, Ballad came up. This is what I do. I'm not an expert on poetry by any means. And neither are you. Which is why we're all learning. We're all learning together. So, in a nutshell, that is it. I have nothing more to say. Thank you very much. Alan the Friesen. Alan at thefriesen.com. Thank you. He's just spoken, so. <laughs> <laughs>